Hello beautiful people, what is up? I have a new video for you guys to re review some movies and television shows that I've been watching recently and I have quite a few. So I have a few different categories, let's get into it. So first of all, I have some Disney movies. So these could be old, these could be new, they could be good, they could be bad, it doesn't matter. They're Disney movies, I have that section. I also have a section on some television series, specifically most of them are like Netflix originals or like streaming originals, so I have some of those. And then I also have um, just a general movies that are older, so most of these either they're old enough where I hadn't, like I wasn't around to be excited about them when they came out, or they're just older and I've never watched them. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with our Disney movies, I watched Hannah Montana, the movie. <laughs> when quarantine started, me and Bailey and Sierra, my two friends, started doing a movie night every Friday night. And we started out with some of these here. So Hannah Montana was one of the movies we watched when we were doing this or while we've been doing this. and. It's just been really fun. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. It's definitely not, like, good, but it's Hannah Montana. It was still enjoyable. We also watched Camp Rock for one of our nights, and this one I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Again, like, it's not good. The acting is not good. It's so ridiculous, but, like, we had so much fun. Oh, my God, and the hair, like, could they just... They just need like a whole inch off the back, maybe three, because those mullets, they needed to go. <laughs> I also watched Lion King for some nostalgia. This was early on in quarantine when I was just having a bad day and needed to watch some Disney. So this is a five out of five for me. If you didn't know, I do have a Lion King tattoo. I have Simba on my arm because Lion King is one of my favorite childhood movies, so that was really fun. And then I also ended up watching Lion King 2 uh, right after that, which is the one where like uh, Nala and Simba's child and Scar's child fall in love and don't think too hard about the incest there. It's fine. Everything's fine. I give it a three and a half out of five stars because it was cute, but it's also like the same exact movie. And even the songs are very similar. And I've never watched them back to back like as an adult. But I really do love Lion King too. It's very nostalgic for me as well. I also watched Cheaper by the Dozen. This was another one of the days when I was just upset and wanted to watch something. And so Cheaper by the Dozen was one of the things that I decided to watch. I freaking love this movie. It's so good. It's just, it brings back that early 2000s nostalgia so hard. I loved it. I give it a four out of five stars. Oh, I give it a five out of five stars. I also watched Atlantis Journey to the Center. I actually, watching it this time around, it's like not as good as I remember it being, so I gave it a four out of five stars. I definitely realized this, this time watching it that it wasn't as good as I quite remembered. It's a very um, I mean, it's a Disney movie, but it's like a very basic plot. It doesn't really have, like I've seen it a million and one times before. So I gave it a four out of five stars. It still is like something that I just, I watch and I enjoy because I watched it as a kid. We also watched Hercules for the same reason. Oh my gosh, the soundtrack to Hercules is freaking phenomenal. Like why, how, why, how, why, how, why, how? I also love the change in art style between the muses and the rest of it. And it's just, Love it. Five out of five stars. And then most recently, I was able to finally watch Onward, which came out on Disney Plus recently. And oh my god, it was so cute. I really, 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 really loved it. I gave it a five out of five stars as well. I like cried a couple times. I loved it. I loved everything about it. I'm a little bit sad that we couldn't watch it in the movie theater because I think it would have been better on the big screen. But you know, life and quarantine. So... I really loved it, five out of five stars. Moving on to some television shows. I rewatched for the second time, The Act, which is a Hulu original. And this is a based on the true story about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Gypsy Rose was basically like forced into medical procedures. She didn't know how old she really was. Lots of uh, stuff about that because her mother had something by proxy 
I'm gonna put it on the screen because I can't remember the word but basically her mom like was convinced that she was sick and so she would like take care of her but none of it was real it was all just in her head and so the show follows the true I mean the true story and it's pretty insane if you watch Mommy Dead Mommy Dearest which is an HBO documentary it's also it's about it's a documentary about Gypsy Rose Blanchard the acting is so well done there's these moments that I watched the documentary afterwards where the actors are moving the same exact way that the real person did in these recordings like from police stations and stuff and it's just really creepy really insane I think that everyone in the show did a really really amazing job five out of five for the second time around. I also watched the documentary series on Netflix of the Gabriel Fernandez case and it just breaks my heart. The whole story is just so horrifying and it was rough to watch. Um, I don't know why my brain decided that I wanted to watch and read and listen to all of these like horrifying terrifying stories of real life um, at the start of the quarantine, but I did, so this was one of them. Gabriel Fernandez was a kid that, he was really young and he was basically murdered by his parents despite there being social services involved in a case that was brought up and it's, it's just such sad like neglect of the system, like the system is broken. Although it really leaves you like feeling a little bit hopeless, I think I think they made the right decision in doing that because the system is broken, this isn't fiction, this is real life, and the fact of the matter is that kids die every day because of our system and its lack of ability to take kids out of the home or choosing not to or various different reasons and yeah, I mm, it hurts. It hurts a lot. It was really well done in my opinion. I also watched Tiger King, which <laughs> is just so it's like watching a car crash and you just can't stop watching you know like everyone in this show it, it amazes me that the people who chose to make this documentary about these big cat owners didn't know going into making this documentary that it was actually going to end up being a murder for hire thing that happened like that's insane to me um, this show is definitely, both Gabriel Fernandez and this show have a lot of trigger warnings, so I highly recommend looking those up before you try them out if you haven't yet. I, the one thing that really brings my rating down for this show is because of their decision not to put any trigger warnings, particularly in the episode that shows somebody dying by suicide. They don't technically show it on screen, but you do see you know what happens off, like right off screen and I, I was disappointed that they didn't put any trigger warnings on this show um, because and I think a lot of times like I watch so I watched this show twice the first time around that that is the only part that really bothered me but the rest of it it, it all feels kind of like fake and ridiculous because it is so ridiculous that these people exist and are real but they are second time around it like really like I felt that better or more so the last show that I watched was season three of Altered Carbon which is a Hulu original sci-fi story and this show is so fun the first season is good the second one was not so great but the third season just really lifted my expectations really high because the budget got better and everything got better the actors are great and it was a fun time. This show follows um, futuristic where like humans are now on multiple planets and all this stuff and we have figured out some way to put our DNA and consciousness into what's called a stack and so we basically like are uploaded into our sleeves, our bodies and so it's really cool this discussion of like, I actually wish there was a little bit more discussion on this aspect of it because being able to change what you look like and stuff. Now there is a lot of discussion on socioeconomic status and stuff about that because only the rich can afford to maintain like clonings of themselves so that they look like themselves as time goes on. They keep getting new sleeves that still look like them. Um, and then other people can afford something a little bit less which is just like getting new bodies um, and continuing, there's a religious aspect of it where people who believe they shouldn't be re-sleeving at all. Um, and then there's also a discussion of like the poor 
or the people who just can't afford it in general. I don't really know, like, what kind of socioeconomic levels these are, but there are people who will use, um, like, they have to just use whatever sleeve is available, so you might have, like, a little kid in a really old man's body or something like that, um, because it's better than being put on ice, which is basically where you're just frozen in time for years, decades, hundreds of years at a time. Um, so it's really, it's really a fascinating concept of all of that, and then you have this, you know, overarching, like, exciting, um, adventure plot that's happening, too, and I just, it's really good. I highly recommend this show. I gave it a five out of five stars for this last season. Okay, before we get into some movies that, like, we should really just, I want to talk about in a little bit more detail, I do have to mention that I watched the entirety of the Twilight series. Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn Part 1 and Part 2 for the first time in years, back to back to back every Friday because like I was mentioning before, me, Sierra, and Bailey have been doing a weekly movie night and we watched Twilight and the whole series. So that was so fun. I loved them. Um, part of the fun is getting to make fun of them. Part of the fun is really thinking like, especially as they go forward, the acting and the directing and everything, the, the effects, special effects and everything it gets so much better and it's pretty cool to watch especially when you go back to back because then you get to see all those special effects and things really um, enhance as time goes on and I just it was so fun so nostalgic had a lot of fun obviously I'm having a lot of fun with the nostalgia aspects of everything right now so moving into some movies that we watched so we watched Star Wars we watched Rogue One specifically we watched it on May the 4th be with you for our anniversary and for May the 4th be with you um, and yeah, we chose to watch Rogue One, which we had only seen the one time in the movie theater beforehand, and it was so fun. It's one of those movies that's like a whole, um, it's a, it's, it's the mission that happens before the start of episode four. Um, it helps fix a big, huge plot hole for the series, and then it also is basically this plot where everybody dies, which is really sad. And if you knew anything about Star Wars, you would have known that going in. The first time I watched it, I did not know that going in. I got super attached to our characters, and then they all died, and I was pissed. But it was really fun still the second time around. It was sad, um, but I also felt a little bit more detached to the characters this time around because I did know where the plot was going. But yeah, I really love the whole idea of like um, the rebellion being based on hope and all of that stuff. It's really fun. And I liked the characters. Also watched Birds of Prey, which is the Harley Quinn movie. And I don't know why this movie gets so much hate. I think the mistake that was made was the way that it was uh, previewed and whatever trailered to. It was catered to kids, but it was made for adults and it's rated R. So like, what? And the name, the original name was way too long. Why did they do that? But the plot was fun. Harley Quinn is such a badass. I love how quirky and funny she is. The one thing I will say is like I fucking hated how much she narrated the whole thing. We could have done with a lot less of that. Um, I gave it a four out of five stars for that reason. I think that we, like I said, just really could have done with a lot less narration. But I really liked just a lot of, it was fun. The fight scenes are so like energetic. Um, they're not like realistic necessarily because she does a lot of flipping and stuff, but the stunt double did really well and I really liked it. The one thing I too also was complaining about when I watched it though is that scene where she's like doing all of the, she like goes into the police station I think and like puts all of the weird like um, bomb stuff in the air so that it's like all colorful which was like gorgeous to watch but like was there a point to this scene was there a point because it didn't really seem like there was one like why why we also watched pitch black which is another sci-fi it has been diesel in it uh they basically get stuck on this planet and he's got vin diesel is a convict that they're trying to like take for the bounty i think but he's the one who ends up being able to save them. This movie was like good, but I didn't like the ending. <laughs> I didn't like the ending at all, um, but it was still fun. Four out of five stars. I don't really know how to explain what it is. Basically like the whole world has like a really long night and there's these like creatures that can only come out in the dark. So they start coming out when they're when the humans that are on this ship are um like shipwrecked on the planet so they have to figure out how to get the ship running again 
it was good. It was very simple. Very simple plot. Lord of the Rings. Watched it for the first time since I can remember. The last time I probably watched it was when I was a little kid. So I don't really remember the plot of it. And um, it was kind of boring. <laughs> It was kind of boring. I gave it a four out of five stars because, like, I want to recognize the fact that J.R.R. Tolkien, like, created all of this. And it was, like, very pretty. But it was kind of boring. <laughs> four out of five stars. Uh, we also watched The Fifth Element, which is another sci-fi. So this one has, what's his name in it? Uh, Bruce Willis, right? Yeah. This guy. And there's this girl who is the fifth element and she like escapes because they're trying to use her to do something and so then she ends up with Bruce Willis on accident you know hijinks ensues I don't know it was kind of weird and I fucking hated the guy he's famous I don't remember his name but he's a comedian and I hated him I was so it was like so clearly just like here let's put this comedian in here I, hate, I didn't, I hated it. I was so mad. I gave it a three out of five. The next movie is Backdraft. This is a 1990s action movie about a firefighter and there's kind of like a mystery involved because you don't know if the firefighters are fighting an actual arsonist or if it's accidental and all of these things and it's kind of like fun and blue. It was fun. I enjoyed. Four out of five stars. We also rewatched Black Swan. This was basically my birthday night because I didn't get to celebrate my birthday because quarantine started right before it and I was pissed. So I said I get to control the remote and I picked to watch Black Swan and it's just so good. I really love this movie. It's so creepy and weird and all of the dancing is wonderful and <laughs> I gave it a four out of five stars. I liked it a lot. It's just so pretty. And then the last movie that I want to talk about is A Simple Favor, which I just watched like a few days ago. This is that movie with Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively. I for sure thought this was like going to be one of those dumb comedy actions, and it wasn't. It was like serious, and it really threw me off because Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively in a serious movie confused me together. I think it's Anna Kendrick that confused me. But anyway, this movie is about Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick are both moms in their sons like share are in a classroom together and Anna Kendrick is like the perfect stay-at-home mom and she has a, a blog and like you know perfect. And then Blake Lively is like um, high fashion and she's like not really around for her kid but she has this like you know power power job power work. And so Anna Kendrick is like helping Blake Lively and then Blake Lively goes missing um, or is, is found murdered. And then it's like, yeah, it's about like what happened to her and all this stuff and it's pretty fucking crazy. I had a fun time with it, but I just like, I think I need to watch it again now that I know what it is because I was so thrown off that it was a serious movie instead of being like a dumb action comedy <laughs> that I like couldn't, I, it was just very jarring to me, but I did really like it. I think I'm going to give it a four out of five stars, but like, I honestly think it could almost be a five star if I had been mentally ready for what I was watching, if that makes sense. It's so weird how that, that's so important to the way that I rate things of like what my expectations are versus reality. It's so weird. But yes, I think that is everything. We have watched a couple more movies, but I'm going to wait to put those for my next set of movies when I do this again because I haven't really like been able to sink in and let those settle in with a review yet. So those will have to wait until the next time that I do a movie and TV review. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments down below what you have been enjoying watching, whether it be TV or movies. I would love to hear about it. And if you have any podcast recommendations, I would also love to hear those. I have been pretty like uh, stagnant on my podcast listening. We do have our own podcast. Me and Bailey host one. It's called Girls Who Gab. It'll be linked up in the cards up above. But um, other than just like focusing on our own content, I haven't personally been watching that much or listening to that many podcasts. I've been focusing a lot more on YouTube in general and then reading, which is great and I'm loving my life right now, but I also do love podcasts. So if you have any recommendations, 
I would greatly enjoy it. I do recommend if you're looking for a personal development book, which is kind of related to how I listen to podcasts, I like a lot of that stuff, would be Lunar Abundance. This is the book. I'm about three quarters of the way through, really, really enjoying it. You read it and journal with it throughout the whole stages of the moon, and it's a fun time. So anyways, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you guys very soon with a new video. I make videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel. You can check out all of my social media and other YouTube and podcasts and etc. related things all down below. I'll see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye!